notice how winter turns you into a completely different person? Okay, well, maybe not completely different, but a less sparkly version of yourself. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony, and if you're new here, this is where I talk openly about the messier bits of life and seek solutions without pretending that I've completely got my shit together. And last week, I had a bit of a spontaneous whinge about winter. I was basically frustrated because I didn't feel like being creative, but I was committed to doing my weekly Sunday upload and my vision for some lovely outdoor filming in the beautiful Irish landscape got scuppered once again by the weather. And I know, in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. It's a proper first world problem. And I think there might be a lesson in there about treading that fine line between discipline and flexibility. But the thing is, it doesn't matter how self-aware you are, finding that balance and telling the negative voice in your head to shut the f up just gets a lot harder in winter. Because reading the comments made me realise how many people connected with that little rant about the winter blues. And it also made me realise that some people just don't get it. Which is usually the case with any topic, but the difference was striking on this one. So I spent this past week digging into the science, not to completely fix it, because you can't, but to understand what's actually happening. And it's not about finding excuses, but about reframing your feelings as a phenomenon rather than a personal failing. So stay with me for the next few minutes and permit me to get a little bit sciencey about the winter brain. As you can see, my light box arrived and many of you have asked if I'll review it, which I absolutely will, but I'll do that in a few weeks so it can fully take effect. And just a quick question before we dive in, where are you watching from? Drop your location in the comments and let's see who's experiencing the winter brain and where they are and please consider subscribing for more reflections on real life and how to make sense of the chaos. Okay, so first let's just zoom right out and state the obvious. The winter blues is location specific and it gets worse the further you are from the equator. So in Florida, for example, less than 1% of people have any sort of seasonal affective disorder or SAD. In Alaska, it's about 9%, and in regions like the British Isles, Scandinavia, and Canada, we're looking at roughly 1% to 3% of the population with full-on SAD, and up to 20% of the population with what you might call a subclinical level. So still able to function, but they definitely lose their mojo for a few months every year. In other words, it's a real thing. About one in five people in those regions far away from the equator are significantly affected by the climate. And apparently, women are hit four times harder than men, especially women in midlife. Yay! So it's geography and biology. There's actually an entire field of study called environmental psychology, and it's quite fascinating. As you can probably guess, it studies the impact of different environments on moods and behaviour. Um, that includes built environments like buildings and urban areas, but it also includes climate, how the weather messes with your brain. And it turns out the weather is not neutral. Research supports what many of us feel intuitively. Sunlight boosts social interaction, cognitive flexibility, spontaneous plans, and all the good stuff that makes you feel alive. Cloud cover can make you feel withdrawn, rigid in your thinking, and craving carbs. And apparently, genetics accounts for around 30% of the variance in people's sensitivity to seasonal changes. God, that was a mouthful. Basically, some of us are just genetically wired to feel the weather more intensely. So if the weather affects you more than your mate who's still out running in the rain like a lunatic, that could be your genes. Okay, but why does this happen? Well, let's get a bit sciencey. Your brain has this tiny timekeeper called the super 
supra supra the suprachiasmatic nucleus, the SCN. That's the key to everything. Think of it like your body's master clock. It senses daylight and tells every other system in your body what time it is. And when there's less light hitting that clock, there are three main changes in your hormone chemistry. Number one, more melatonin, which can make you feel sleepy. Number two, less serotonin, so your mood dips and your motivation tanks. And number three, cortisol gets confused. So it's like your momentum gets disrupted and your energy goes a bit flat. Put that all together and you have a perfect recipe for feeling unmotivated. But what's the point of all this? Why on earth would your body do that to you? Well, essentially, the goal is to try and balance your body's energy by slowing down and eating more. Your metabolism slows down to preserve resources when, historically, in winter, food was scarce. But at the same time, your immune system's ramping up, getting ready for cold and flu season. And all those little white blood cells are preparing to fend off viruses. And all of this takes energy. It's a bit like your body's running multiple programs in the background while also trying to preserve battery life. That's why you might feel knackered. So your body isn't sabotaging you, it's actually doing a pretty impressive juggling act trying to keep you alive through the winter. Now, obviously we evolved like this over millions of years. That's many, many generations of ancestors whose lives were fundamentally different from ours. They lived mostly outdoors, walking, tracking the sun, responding to the seasons. Our biology is built for that. We're supposed to slow down a bit in winter, yet modern life demands the same pace all year round. So winter just exposes this massive mismatch between how we're built and how we're living. All this time indoors, on screens, following the same schedule week in, week out, sitting for most of the day. We know our brains and bodies just aren't designed for that. And I'm sure you already know all this. Sometimes we can all use a reminder. And I'm not saying all this to be a Debbie Downer. I actually find it very reassuring because when you understand what's happening, you can stop blaming yourself and seek solutions. Obviously, we're gonna do all the practical things, the therapy lamps, the vitamin D, all that foundational stuff around food and sleep and exercise and getting outdoors. And look, everyone experiences this differently. For me, it's not so much fatigue, it's the mental shift. My inner critic gets louder, so I just have to work a bit harder to keep things in perspective. You might notice different things. Maybe it feels more physical for you. The point is to pay attention to your patterns and do what helps. But realistically, no matter what we do, there will still be times when we just feel a bit crap. And that's when we can remind ourselves it's not a character flaw, it's seasonal and it will pass. And knowing this isn't an instant fix, but it does help. So take the steps you can. Don't beat yourself up if you still feel a bit down in the dump sometimes, because winter brain is real, and now you know why. And in a few weeks, I'll give you an update on how things are going with my therapy lamp and the vitamin D and any other practical stuff that's helped. So if you want the follow-up, or if this video has helped you feel a bit less like there's something wrong with you, then hit like and subscribe and share it with someone who's currently hiding under a blanket. See you next week.